here today, I'm announcing my candidacy for president of the United States. Folks, America's an idea. An idea that's stronger than any army, bigger than any ocean, more powerful than any dictator or tyrant. It's time to stand up and take back our democracy. We can do this. We can be better than what we've been. We can be who we are at our best. The United States of America. The gaff-prone former vice president pretty much launched his campaign last night with a gaff. I'm told I get criticized by the new left. I have the most progressive record of anybody running for the United if anybody who would run. Um, I do not believe you are a racist. And I agree with you when you commit yourself to the importance of finding common ground. But I also believe, and it's personal, and it, I was actually very, it was hurtful to hear you talk about the reputations of two United States senators who built their reputations and career on the segregation of race in this country. I was six years old when a presidential candidate came to the California Democratic Convention and said, it's time to pass the torch to a new generation of Americans. That candidate was then Senator Joe Biden. He's still right today. If we're gonna solve the issues of automation, pass the torch. If we're gonna solve the issues of climate chaos, pass the torch. If we're gonna solve the issue of student loan debt, pass the torch. If Vice President, would you like to sing a torch I song? Would. <laughs> I'm still holding on to that torch. One bad sound bite at a time. Of course I'm talking about Joe Biden and his sometimes nonsensical, sometimes fanciful, and sometimes, some would argue, racist comments that have plagued him on this recent campaign. How is he still in the race? Will someone tell him to stop making ad hoc comments and stick to his script? Should we call the people on Joe and get him some help? A huge mistake, and one of the big differences between you and me, I never believed what Cheney and Bush said about Iraq. If she qualifies uh, are, you, are you forgetting what you said two minutes ago? Be are you forgetting already what you said just two minutes ago? He says, well, that was the president. I mean, he wants to take credit for Obama's work, but not have to answer to any questions. I stand with Barack Obama all eight years, good, bad, and indifferent. That's where I stand. Now on the road to 2020, a new poll of likely Democratic voters in next year's Iowa caucus shows a change at the top, at least for now. The Des Moines Register CNN poll shows Elizabeth Warren now leading Joe Biden by two points. Bernie Sanders is a distant third. Democrats win when we figure out what is right and we get out there and fight for it. One of the world's richest people is officially running for president, but he won't be on the ballot in the early contests that are considered critical for most of his rivals. Michael Bloomberg, the former Republican mayor of New York, launched his Democratic Party campaign with millions of dollars worth of TV ads. About who we're running against, a billionaire who calls women fat broads and horse-faced lesbians. And no, I'm not talking about Donald Trump. I'm talking about Mayor Bloomberg. I have no tolerance for the kind of behavior that the Me Too movement, movement has exposed. In my company, lots and lots of women have big responsibilities. They get paid exactly the same as men. I hope you heard what his defense was. I've been nice to some women. The major news in the race for 2020, Senator Kamala Harris announcing she's dropping out. Once drawing huge crowds, one of the top candidates on the Democratic side. So what happened? It's both an honor and disappointment to be the lone candidate of color on the stage tonight. Senator Sanders, you are the oldest candidate on stage this and evening. And I'm white as well. I'm running because I've been around on my experience. Senator Warren, you would be the oldest president ever inaugurated. I'd like you to weigh in as well. Uh, I'd also be the youngest woman ever inaugurated. <laughs> We are now three days after the Iowa caucus, and almost all of the results have now been reported. The updated Democrats' delegate count shows Pete Buttigieg with a razor-thin lead over Bernie Sanders. Both have about 26 percent. They're followed by Elizabeth Warren, Joe Biden, and Amy Klobuchar. 
One candidate who did not stick around for the New Hampshire primary results was Joe Biden. The former vice president instead headed to South Carolina last night. He attended a launch party in Columbia where he rallied supporters. The pressure appears to be ramping up to perform well in the state after two lackluster showings in Iowa and New Hampshire. CNN projects that Joe Biden is the winner in South Carolina. This is the former vice president's first primary victory. He was counting on South Carolina to help keep his campaign going. This gives him, uh, this gives Biden a much needed boost as he looks to challenge the front runner Bernie Sanders on Super Tuesday. That's only three days from now. Joe Biden, the winner of the South Carolina Democratic primary. Dana, a major, major win for the former vice president. Three prominent Democrats running for president have dropped out of the race between South Carolina's primary on February 28th and Super Tuesday on March 3rd. Billionaire activist Tom Steyer suspended his campaign even before South Carolina results were fully reported. Former South Bend, Indiana Mayor Pete Buttigieg won the Iowa caucuses, but couldn't carry the momentum into subsequent primaries. Senator Amy Klobuchar announced the end of her campaign while also endorsing former Vice President Joe Biden at a rally in Dallas on March 2nd. It is up to us, all of us, to put our country back together to heal this country and then to build something even greater. I believe we can do this together. And that is why today I am ending my campaign and endorsing Joe Biden for president. Super Tuesday really delivered on the super, a real shocker and a political earthquake. These are the results nobody saw coming. Let's go straight to the map this morning. Joe Biden surging to victories in nine states, including a surprise win in Texas. Bernie Sanders won three states, including his home state of Vermont. Turning now to the delegate count, Biden grabbing the lead over Sanders at the moment, 449 to 371. Keep in mind, though, it takes 1,991 to win the nomination, so we've got a long way to go to get there. Yeah, both candidates vowing, of course, to fight on. The front runners address supporters and it took a few shots. And we're told, well, when you got to Super Tuesday, it'd be over. Well, it may be over for the other guy. We're going to win because the people understand it is our campaign, our movement which is best positioned to defeat Trump. In the race for the White House, Joe Biden is officially the Democratic Party nominee for president. The former vice president will face off against President Trump in a campaign already upended by the coronavirus. We've seen that same callousness, callousness in his handling of the coronavirus. Just over three months ago, as most Americans are first coming to grips with this unprecedented scale of danger, this pandemic, President Trump publicly claimed that, and I quote, anybody, anybody that wants a test, anybody can get it. It simply was not true. The fact is, I'm here. What's the name of that building? But I'll say it differently. The fact is, we're here, and they're not. Then, when he was told for the first time that we're like we did today, a thousand deaths a day, remember what his comment was? He said, it is what it is. Well, it is what it is because he is who he is. That's why it is what it is. Why should a firefighter an educator, a nurse, a cop, pay at a higher tax rate, which you do, than a major multi-billion dollar corporation. Why should you pay more taxes than Donald Trump, who paid $750? Look, you know, this doesn't sound nice. I'll say it, and they'll criticize me for it. You watch, but I have the distinct pleasure of running against the worst presidential candidate in the history of presidential politics. I really believe that. I believe that. Can you imagine if I lost to him? I'd have to say I lost to the worst candidate ever put up.
Don't do that to me, Michigan. Will you Who shut is up, man? Listen, You're the, the worst way, president voice. America has hey, ever had. Hey, hey, Come Joe, on. Me, this guy will close down the whole country and destroy our country. Our country is coming back incredibly well, setting records as it does it. We don't need somebody to come in and say, let's shut it down. We handed him a booming economy. He blew it. He panicked or he just looked at the stock market. One of the two, because guess what? A lot of people died and a lot more are going to die unless he gets... And in the last few minutes, President Trump has tweeted saying that he and the First Lady have tested positive for COVID-19. Hi, perhaps you recognize me. It's your favorite president. And I'm standing in front of the Oval Office at the White House, which is always an exciting place to be. I got back a day ago from Walter Reed Medical Center. I spent four days there. I think this was a blessing from God that I caught it. This was a blessing in disguise. We have a vaccine that's coming. It's ready. It's going to be announced within weeks, and it's going to be delivered. We have uh, Operation Warp Speed, which is the military is going to distribute the vaccine. I was in the hospital. I had it. And I got better, and now they say I'm immune. Whether it's four months or a lifetime, nobody's been able to say that. You know, someday you're going to have to explain why did you get three and a half. I never got any money from Russia. I don't get money from Russia. The foreign countries are paying you a lot. Russia's paying you a lot. China's paying you a lot. And your hotels and all your businesses all around the country, all around the world. I get American treated people. worse than the Tea Party got treated. Because I have a lot of time. people in there, yeah. deep down in the IRS, they treat me horribly. My son has not made money in terms of this thing about, uh, what are you talking about, China. I have not had, a, the only guy made money from China is this guy. He's the only one. Nobody else has made money from China. And what's he do? He embraces guys like the thugs like in North Korea and and, uh, and the Chinese president and Putin and others. And he pokes his finger in the eye of all of our friends, all of our allies. Success is going to bring us together. I represent all of you, whether you voted for me or against me. Everybody knows who Donald Trump is. Let's keep showing them who we are. We made history together four years ago, and tomorrow we're going to make history once again. He's never forgot why he ran for president and who he is fighting for. You. 2020 is going to change for 2021. Let's vote Trump out. I understand the president wants to take full credit for the economy he inherited, but zero blame for the pandemic he ignored. But the job doesn't work that way. And we will make America great again. It's election night in America, and a nation in crisis is at a crossroad. Look at this. Sorry to interrupt. NBC News is projecting Donald Trump will be the ultimate winner in Florida, and it's 29 electoral votes, Texas. Uh, it turns out that uh, Democrats, maybe some of them, spotted a blue mirage in some of the early numbers, and uh, hope overcame uh, facts in this case. Texas remains. A red state under Donald Trump. Yeah, we got a big number here. Uh, NBC News is projecting Ohio will go in the Trump column when all the votes are counted. Americans on Wednesday still without an answer as the historic presidential race still hangs in the balance. Thousands of ballots are still being counted with all eyes on battleground states, including Michigan and Pennsylvania. It's breaking news out of the Badger State. CBS News is projecting Wisconsin to flip for Joe Biden. Let me just interrupt you just for a moment, Pete. Stay with us. Uh, Michigan, on your screen right now, this is a very big call uh, that we are now ready to make. NBC News Decision Desk projecting the winner of Michigan, Biden. Bi And this is a CBS News special report. I'm Nora O'Donnell at CBS News, and we are coming on the air with breaking news at this hour. CBS News projects that Joe Biden has been elected the 46th president of the United States. The kid from Scranton becomes the next leader of the free world. The 77-year-old former vice president, now the president-elect of the United States.